Well, let's move on to Snap. The Snap soap opera shares a snap down almost 10% at the time of our taping. On Tuesday, the technology company said that CFO Tim Stone is leaving the company after just eight months on the job. Now, here are a few stats. Stone moved to Snap in May after working at Amazon for 20 years. Now, in addition to his salary, he had $20 million in restricted stock with an option to buy 500,000 common shares. Stone will not get the majority of that stock as it was scheduled to vest over four years. So he's leaving with all this stock on the table. What is going on here? That's a really good question. Um, I, I think it's interesting if you see someone coming from Amazon who has such a quick turnover at Snap, because then it begs the question of, well, you know, Amazon doesn't have the best reputation for company culture and employees. <laughs> so, how bad are things at Snap that it couldn't even last a year? So, I mean, I don't have much insight into the Snap culture, unfortunately, but I don't think it bodes well for the company. No, and I mean, I, we've, we've read a lot into the culture at Snap, which Again, that's you're reading that, but but those are the only accounts we we can really go by, and, and they don't seem all that clear. I mean, I, I like to have a lot of fun with this company because I I really don't what like is it. Snap. What well, is this company? They're a self-proclaimed camera company. I would argue that today <laughs> it seems they're more in the business of revolving doors, based on everybody who's leaving. But I mean, listen, so I'm working a little bit on my roasting skills here, and I, <laughs> I came like up it. with a few I things like on the ride to work today, Mac. You scrounge through the change in your couch, and you're likely to come up with enough money to buy a share of Snap before a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Hey, oh! <laughs> I'm not saying things are dire, but we may need to start referring to the company as Snapped. Oh, oh wow. nice. shareholders' nice. best chance for a double from today's price is a reverse split. Wow, okay. I'm out. There you go, George Costanza. Nice. Nah, no, just nice. listen. We give these guys a hard time, but really, we should because this is a company that probably should have never come public. I blame the underwriters for that. It's hard to blame Evan Spiegel because they gave him a lot of money to do this. But I have a feeling you are greed blame is Evan greed Spiegel. is just greed. But you know the bottom line is, investors deserve at least a competent leader, and he's not one. And listen, we hold other CEOs to the same account. I mean, Kevin Plank is one that I've kept on the hot seat all of 2018. Put him on the hot seat in 2019 because we saw the same problem there at Under Armour. Executives would come in there, work, and then they leave, and it clear a pattern starts emerging, and you realize that he's not the easiest guy to work with. And and so thankfully, with Under Armour, their COO and CFO have have stayed on, and that's the standard we felt. That's one of those red flags we've been watching. And with Spiegel and and Snap, unfortunately, executives keep on leaving. I mean, this is not the first person to leave. They have a big problem here. And and I mean the other. Other problem and a really a damning chart I ran across on Twitter the other day from Rob Price over Business Insider. I think this says a lot. There's a a Cowan survey that was done here in December of 2018, where the question was posed to ad partners: If given the choice, which would your largest client prefer to advertise on? Choices between Instagram stories and Snapchat stories. Okay, 100 percent. Answered Instagram stories to zero percent Snapchat stories. That is a huge problem, and it doesn't seem like they've come up with any way to answer it yet. Yeah, those numbers don't seem good. No. Okay, so when we look out into the future, five years from now, and we're looking at Snap, has Snap faded away slowly or quickly? Has it been acquired, or has it come up with some sort of second act? And we are talking about the great rebound, the great recovery. It's Snap. There is a hundred percent a second act here. No, no, I'm joking. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's a slow decline for me. I mean, for me, it's a. I'm not. I don't think it's gonna be a fast decline. I think they're gonna hold on for as long as possible. But I really don't think anyone's making an acquisition here because they still haven't figured out a way to effectively monetize. I mean, Jason's stat perfectly encompasses it. What are you getting when you're buying Snapchat? Uh, not much. I think they're probably going to struggle along for a little while, and it's going to be that sad, slow decline. I, yeah, I I want to be glass half full and say there's something there. I I tend to agree with Emily here, though. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe at a fraction of what the market's paying for it today, there's something that somebody out there might like. But clearly, the platform is bleeding users. I mean, I admittedly never use Snapchat. 
But it, it sounds like a lot of people don't use Snapchat, and that's a big problem. So I think the only chance they really have is what we've seen other companies in the space like Twitter and Facebook do over time is acquire other apps, bring into their family. They're not really doing that, and part of that is probably them recognizing themselves as a camera company. Most people say camera, they think hardware. We don't like investing in that stuff. So I just yeah, I tend to agree with Emily.